This video covers topic 14.2, solving equations, quadratic equations by graphing. So a quick review for you, a quadratic equation is an equation that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember, as long as it's in the right form, it's literally as easy as abc. This is called the standard form of the quadratic equation. One way to solve the quadratic equation is to graph the related function and the solutions of the equation are the x-intercepts. So problem one asks me to analyze the graph of x squared minus 4. That is the graph that is shown. The solutions of x squared minus 4 equals 0 are the x-intercepts, so the points where they cross the x-axis. So that would be negative 2 and 2. The following words below all mean the same thing and are used interchangeably. Solutions, x-intercepts, roots, and zeros. All of those words mean find where it crosses the x-axis. So problem two, they asked me to analyze the graph of g of x, which is negative x squared plus 14x minus 45. So my solutions are where they cross the x-axis, so here, and here, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So my solutions are 5 and 9. Remember, roots mean the same thing, where it crosses the x-axis. So 5 and 9. You cannot just draw an arrow because we need you to write them down so you will remember they mean the same thing. My vertex, as a review from yesterday, is the highest or lowest point. In this case, it would be the highest. So this is the point 6, 4. So my vertex is at 6, 4 and is a maximum. Domain is always all reals. My range uses the Y from my vertex. Because I have a maximum value, meaning this is the highest, all of my y's are getting lower than or less than 4. And then my axis of symmetry is always x equals the x from my vertex. x equals, oh, that's not even the right number. It's supposed to be a 7. I apologize. So my axis of symmetry goes through the vertex and is where the left side would match up with the right side. Problem three it says determine the roots of the function graph below. So roots, meaning where it crosses the x-axis. This is my x-axis, and if you notice, nothing is crossing. So that means there are no solutions and there are no roots. There is still a vertex. My vertex in this case is a minimum. It is the lowest point. So this is 0, 2. And it is a minimum because it is a low point. Domain is always all reals. Range uses the y from your vertex. Because I have a minimum, all of my y's are getting greater than. They're going above. And my axis of symmetry, x equals the x from your vertex. Problem 4 asks me to use the sketch of the parabola below to solve negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. My solutions are the points where they cross, so 1 and 3. Remember, if you're asked for the zeros of the function, it's the same thing as the solutions, the same thing as the x-intercepts, always looking for where it crosses the x-axis. Vertex is the highest or lowest point. In this case, we have a maximum, and it is at the point 2, 1. Domain is always all reals. My range uses the y from my vertex. Because I have a maximum, all of my y's are getting lower than because max is the high point, so everything else is lower. Axis of symmetry, x equals the x from your vertex. So if I were to draw a line, if I could draw lines. 
and fold it on this line, the left side would match the right side. Five asks me to find the roots of x squared minus 6x plus 8, and they asked me to use the table and sketch the graph of the parabola below. So we have the table with the x's and the y's. We're just going to draw a rough sketch with this table. So 4, 0, so I need to go out to 4 on the x-axis, and I could go 4 in all of the directions. So the point 4, 0 would be there. We go to the right 4 and nowhere up or down. 3, negative 1 would be to the right 3 and down 1. And 2, 0 would be to the right 2, and then not going up or down any. So I can see just from my sketch without even drawing the graph, my roots where it crosses the x-axis, my x-intercepts, my zeros, my solutions, all mean the same thing. My roots are these two points right here where they're crossing the x-axis. So those would be the points 2, 0, and 4, 0. Now can we make a connection back to the table where my y's equal 0 is the same place where my roots are? Well, yes I can because remember roots mean x-intercept. x-intercept means number for x, 0 for y, and we can see that in the table. Now using these points, I could draw my graph. I know that it has to cross at these two spots, and it has to go through this point. So it would look something like that and something like that. Remember your quadratic looks like a U or a mountain, so once you've crossed twice, you won't like come back and cross. There won't be anything like that or anything crazy. Okay, so from this we can see that our vertex is that lowest point down here, which is the point three, negative one. And this would be a minimum because my I have to go through those other roots. I have to go through that point, so that is my lowest point, and it will go up from there. Domain is always all reals. Range uses the x from your vertex. And because I have a minimum, everything else is getting bigger than. My axis of symmetry is x equals the x point from my vertex. Six tells me the function h of x has zeros at negative four and two, and a range of all real numbers less than or equal to nine. Remember, less than means lower than. Sketch this graph. So my zeros are at negative four and two. Remember, zeros, x-intercepts, solutions, crosses the x-axis, roots, all mean the same thing. My range, so my y's, are less than or lower than or equal to 9. So I go all the way up to 9. And you might want to write 9 just in case your graph doesn't look good. Mine is not great. Now, if my range is lower than 9, it's going to have to go down or below or underneath 9. Now my graph isn't exactly accurate, so I'll hold off on that. Okay, so we know our x-intercepts are negative 4 and 2. Roots mean the same thing as x-intercepts. Solutions mean the same thing as x-intercepts. Remember, you cannot just draw arrows. You will not get credit for that because you do have to rewrite them to remind yourself these all mean the same thing. Now my axis of symmetry I can't quite see what my vertex is just by plotting these three points. So my axis of symmetry, my best goal here, would be to take these two roots. I have this one over here at negative 4 and this one at, th at 2, and figure out where the middle goes. Because I know that somewhere in between these, I can fold this graph on the axis of symmetry, and the left side would match the right side. So your vertex is always aligned with your axis of symmetry, and it needs to be equivalent to those. So if I count, and you don't have to draw this, I'm just showing you what I'm looking at. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
there are six points in between. So halfway between six would be three. So if I go from one to the other, I'm looking to go three from this, one, two, three, and my axis of symmetry would be at x equals negative one. So there's my axis of symmetry. Now remember, your axis of symmetry goes through your vertex. So my vertex can't be any bigger than 9. So that means 9 would have to be my max. Okay, so this 9 that I drew to show you that it was 9 is not indicating the vertex. It's just showing you that's the highest point. So the highest point is always your vertex. So we found the x by counting between and finding the middle between my intercepts. And then if my range is no higher than 9, remember your range comes directly from your vertex. So that must mean my vertex goes through 9 for the y's. And then axis of symmetry, negative 1 for the x. This is going to be a maximum because you cannot go any higher than 9, meaning 9 is my max and we can't go higher than 9.